I'm 51 years young. I felt slavish. You know, we are human beings. You gotta appreciate people, even if working for you. Where were you getting your CMOS from? If I'm so passionate about it, why not monetize with it? Okay, now we get married. Where do we go from this thing? How am I gonna pay my rent? So you finally took the leap of faith. In my mind, I'm saying if it fails, it's all on him. Bad Mafsur, did they say I got a taqreed? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh to all Ripa Hadith disciples, YouTubers and viewers Welcome back to a new video on Ripwright HD And today I have my wife on the show um, So we're going to be talking a little bit about entrepreneurship How did she come about? How did she start? You know her origin and her background So sister, can you go ahead and introduce yourself Just like your name, how old you are and um, where you're from. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Khadija. Um, uh, known as Super C Gems on Instagram. Um, originally, I was born in Grenada, but I grew up in Trinidad. So I'm kind of split in half and half. Uh, Grenadian and Trinidad. My parents, um, both my mother was from Grenada and my father from Trinidad. So... That's how that came about. Um, yeah, I'm 51 years young. Alhamdulillah. Um, and how Alhamdulillah. long? And how long um, after birth w did you migrate from Grenada to Trinidad? I was just two years old when my mother, my father, took me to Trinidad, and I grew up with my grandmother in Trinidad. So, have you been back to Grenada since? I've been back to Grenada twice when I was a young girl at 13 and when I was a grown woman at 27. Um, and um, growing up, well, I grew up with my grandmother, so hence the reason why I am so passionate about Seymour's because that's all she used to give us. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. So, okay, after migrating from Grenada to Trinidad, how long was it until you um came to the u.s oh i came to the u.s in um uh february of 2002 i went back to trinidad after a year or so and, and how then, old were you when you got to u.s um 2002 i was oh, 22 yeah no I was born in 1970, so 20 or two would bring me along to um, 30. Oh, so you 32. was in your 30s when you yeah. finally got to the USA? 32, yeah. Okay, and then from there you went back to Trinidad for some time and then came back? Just for a little bit. I went to Trinidad for like um, uh, maybe six months and decided that I'm, I want to go back, so. Okay, yeah. okay. And then w once you got here, okay, uh, mm -hmm. uh, let's just let's just re rewind a little bit. Mm -hmm. Now you said you know about CMOS because of your grandmother. Mm -hmm. So, as far as it's uh, you know you're thirty years old in Trinidad around that time, twenty something. What kind of jobs were you doing? How were you working? How were you gaining your income in Trinidad? Oh, well, I started working since I was fifteen years old. I was doing uh, messenger work for uh, this uh, boutique lady selling she was selling really nice clothes and i mean i um at that point in time i wanted to gain my little my own income at first to begin i was working before that but i was doing work with my grandmother she used to go on the streets and do vendor work you know selling yeah. oh you're okay you was about to say what was she selling she was selling like uh, food to eat. She was selling pones, cassava pone. She was selling drinks, Seymour's drinks, Morby, Sorrel. And she used to go in front of construction sites and sell these. So when the men get their lunch breaks or, or, you know, break time, they would come and buy stuff. And, you know, they know they knew her and she had a whole uh big, yeah, yeah. Uh, customers and okay so you, you would know. you would say because you was raised with your grandmother that's where you got your hustle from yeah she was a real hustler and that's how i learned you know to um start earning money from a young age i i, I was always working okay you know? so you worked that whole time 
while you was in Trinidad getting money on the side. Yeah. And then you came to the U.S. And what did you start doing for income once you got here? I was doing little babysitting jobs and uh, taking care of elderly people, home home health aid. I did the course and, you know, and um, I went, I got my GED. I did, you know, I, I did not, I wasn't, um, I did not have any papers or so. That's what they call it when you, you, you're undocumented, you know, you don't got papers and stuff. So these were the jobs that I was doing at the time, you know, I mean, that was available at the time. So. Yeah. And that's how you, you, you was getting your money. Yeah. So now how did you come about saying, you know what, I'm in, um, NYC, USA, I'm going to go ahead and start selling and bottling up CMOS. Hmm. Ooh, I did that. Um, I can't remember the, the uh, how long ago I started it, but I, it's it's been a while. It's been some years. Um, maybe about I would say roughly about ten years when no one wasn't really thinking about Seamus that much, and my um. I was still working, but I was just doing that on the side because I liked it. And then I understand that there was a, a growing market for it. So I started doing it on the side because uh, I understand that there was uh, CMOS out there that people was um, consuming that wasn't the real thing. That really wasn't, yeah, it wasn't. So you decided, let me get my own CMOS. And at this time, where were you getting your CMOS from? Was it like a local store? Was it? Yeah, I used to get it from a local Grenadian store. Okay, and you knew theirs was coming straight from the Caribbean islands. Yeah, because I, you know, I researched and I spoke to the owner, and you know, I I really Check wanted the to know. Out. Yeah, where where it was from, and all of that. So before I started buying it, so yeah, that's how I started. Okay, mm -hmm. and then from there, um, you were selling your CMOS for for pretty low. What um, what was the reason for that? Um, I was selling my CMOS for uh, fifteen dollars a thirty two ounce bottle of gel. Wow. Um, the reason why because I wanted um people, which sounds so silly, but I wanted people to have like uh authentic seymours without thinking that i have to uh good food or um healthy food is so expensive yes and it's gonna burst their pockets so instead of me just making money i was uh focused on <laughs> people. helping the people yeah helping I mean, people that's humanitarian stats get Seymour's, you know, like I was making, if I made a dollar on one bottle, I have made a lot. So whatever I was spending on it, that's, that's just what I'm getting back. I, yeah. I wasn't losing. So which, you know, that was kind of. It was blessings in it. So yeah. you, you were gaining. Well, I don't know. At the point in time, I don't know. I'm not thinking about blessings or nothing. I'm just, I just want to give them, give it to them, you know, and that, um, that gave me, you know, a good feeling inside that I'm supplying them with, with you know. Good At that feeling. point, it, I didn't have much customers, but I had customers. I had people coming back. I even had people uh, buying the CMOS in bulk, and I did not know they were selling it. Reselling it because yeah. it was so cheap, and yeah. it was that, the, the real, the holy field. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so what what made you say, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and raise these prices. I'm going to, um, I'm going to go ahead and actually start making this my living because, you know, um, because I'm not working no more. You know, I'm not, I'm no longer doing a nine to five. So I actually have to do something where I can get some profit to survive. You know that answer, you did. <laughs> Well, well, you know, you kind of influence it a little bit, and you know, um, because you said to me, "Why oh, are you selling your Seymour's? 
for fifteen dollars. Yeah, I said, yeah, I'm saying I want to give people the Seymour's. He said, like you just not giving people, you giving it away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you know, um. So you have to switch up. Yeah. So okay. he uh, basically said that if I'm so passionate about it, why not you know monetize with it? So, you know, and still uh, be reasonable, hence the reason why my CMOS is not that expensive. Um, so, you know, still be reasonable, but be able to make a profit or, you know. Yeah, and, okay. So now, at this point in time, your CMOS is cheap. Um, oh, inexpensive. Inexpensive, because <laughs> we can, you can't really say cheap. It, it's just super affordable, her CMOS at this time. <laughs> we meet um okay now we get married she's mm -hmm. still working mm -hmm. but entrepreneur status or uh, entrepreneur he wants everybody to be an entrepreneur <laughs> even if they don't want to be entrepreneurs so where where do we go from this stage you're working you're helping elderly people your home health aid mm -hmm. where we go from there well you're not so you know like you got you had me thinking because you know when you start uh when i see him working and stuff and i see him how busy he is and how passionate he is about what he's doing you know that kind of inspired me a lot and i'm like you know i'm getting up uh five o'clock in the morning to go to work and i'm leaving him in the bed and i'm like oh my god there's mornings that i'm like oh i gotta go get the train and you know i'm sleeping on the train you know, because it's early and, you know, I get to thinking and I'm still doing my CMOS on the side. And I just got to thinking, you know, maybe he's, you know, and he's telling me he got my back too. So I said, okay, you know, if it, if it, if it fails, it's in my mind, I'm saying if it fails, it's all on him. So, <laughs> <laughs> so let me give it a try, you know, is, uh, you take risks when you, uh, enter an entrepreneurship you take risk and that was a risk that I took or I felt that I took because I in my mind I'm thinking how am I gonna pay my rent how am I gonna you know be able to support my son and you know be able because I help my family a lot too so I'm like how am I gonna be able to help my little nieces and nephews you know and I I just I mean but I went for it and so you finally took the leap of faith. Yeah. Okay, so now... No, you... but somebody encouraged that in my job. Like, I was, I was not going nowhere, even though I was thinking it. Because I was like, I'm getting a paycheck every week, or um, every two weeks. And I'm fine with it. Sometimes I do a little overtime, and it's real overtime. And, you know, and I, I, guess, I guess some extra pay, and I keep checking that. But at a point, in, I was saving money the same time but then I got a real wake-up call when I was spoken to in a kind of uh, really um, disrespectful kind of way. vile way yeah yeah at my job and I was I felt slavish when I when when I when you know that they spoke to me this way and um, I didn't like the tone of it and I addressed it and when I addressed it, I still did not like the tone. So, you know, it was like, you're not going to take into consideration how you spoke to somebody. And to me, that's, you know, we are human beings. Like we, you know, you got to appreciate people, even if they, they working for you or they not working for you. It, the person on the street, you got to appreciate people because you don't know. My grandmother always said me, you don't know when you're going to fall down. And and the same person you you maybe disrespecting or whatever maybe that's the person gonna be in your way to help you. To pick so, you up. So yeah, so you know you 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 have to know how you treat them people and stuff like that. You can't. I yeah. mean, everybody is humans. We humans. We here for mm -hmm. a, a time, and we 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 all gotta go. We are not here to stay. Yes. You know. So so, so now, at this point in time. Obviously, Super C Gems is popping off. Mm -hmm. You got your logo. Yeah. You got you. everything in, in, in the works. Um, I'm working overtime, obviously, because I'm helping you. And I'm also... F1. And I'm also mm -hmm. working on my own business. So we get her logos. We get everything, her packaging. We try to get everything mm -hmm. up her website. 
she starts to sell. She starts to boom. She is seeing extra money. Mm. So this is where the belief kind of comes in. Yeah. Like, wow, I'm actually making this amount of money. I start investing in the stock. <laughs> yeah. I'm, wow, it's five grand here, six grand here, seven grand here. Well, I'm making a lot of money, reasonable, where I can say literally at my job, like, it, it doesn't make sense. Translation is a lump of flesh, a piece of meat. And when that lump of flesh...